the gift of our own Christianity, the gift of our personal relationship with Jesus, the gift of our parishes, the gift of our church that could just be attractive on, on mm-hmm. every front. Right. And like Father Mark Mary said, it's like, yeah, we're, pra- we're, we're praising and worshiping in all the right ways with the reverence and, and the worship of God. And then we're warm and the gift of our personalities where we have the, the gift of communion with the poor, um, with our families, like all the, all the, all the right ways of evangelization, like everything is just attractive. Mm. Um, for some reason, that word, it just strikes me because yeah. I think that's what the gospel is supposed to do. Jesus was the most <clears throat> attractive person mm-hmm. in every part of his divinity and humanity. You're like, whoa, like something's happening there. And I think he just wants us to share in that. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Oh, wow, we just went into it. Hey, I'm Father Angelus, everybody. <laughs> hey, I'm Father PC. Hi, my name is Father <laughs> Innocent. I have a question for you guys. Oh, right off the bat, let's go. Why, what do you, why do you do this podcast? Ooh, ooh, is this a real question? <laughs> kind of, because everyone, like, this is like, this is like a big push today. Mm. This is like a big stretch, mm. coming tire, coming off, getting off the road, all this sort of stuff. I asked myself. No one's getting paid. Question. You know what I mean? We're not like we're not just like money's not going in your bank account. That's being able to do true. This. What's the? Why do you do it? I got a donation, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a little green handshake. I'll I'll jump into that. A um, couple things. Don't be pious. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Seriously, don't touch me. As Michelle Tanner says, cut it out. We're Stephanie. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. You, you just I just like, went there. I just went there. You do like a full, full house? house? Yeah, full house. Wow. I mean, I could co Urkel. Did I do that? Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so why I do this podcast? So (laughs) I'm pretty continually. I'm very. I think generally, like I just experience a lot of humility and a lot of our work as just in a like preaching evangelization. And so I just think the Lord uses just yeah our our community to to evangelize in incredible ways. So I'm just really humbled by that. And this particular podcast is has just blessed a lot of people. And it's something I'm kind of overwhelmed by consistently just seeing what the Lord does. And again, that's humble. We're like, we, he just, you know, uses us as kind of these, <coughs> these mouthpieces, but, but the Lord does a lot. And so I'm, I'm pretty consistently moved and, and hearing the feedback and that this is a really holy space for people to encounter mm-hmm. the Lord and to pray, right? It's not about us. It's, it's about them encountering Jesus. Right. So you hear that you're like, oh man, Lord, like I have, like, we don't all need some like more things to do. Mm-hmm. Right. And we have to make the sacrifices and schedule and things like that. And we drive Father Mark Mary crazy because he's always like trying to get the calendar out. And it's not easy trying to figure out all this, how, how this can happen. But I, I'm just moved that the Lord actually uses it in the lives of people to help them grow and help them experience his love and mercy. And so that's that's the main reason why I do it. It's just, there's just fruit. People, people just grow and their relationship with Jesus, right? And that's the deepest desire of our hearts, I think, for for this. But also, it is there is a fraternal element. Mm-hmm. Like this is the, the to hang out with you guys, and I think generally people see it. But it it is like a, an absolute joy to be brothers and to hang out and to get their own friendship and our own brotherhood. We're not doing this because like, oh man, like we have to like hang out with these people. But there is a great gift of doing it together, and so that's also incredible gift and joy to be like, well, at least I get to hang out with people I really love. <laughs> like instead of just like, all right, let's go, let's just try to get through this. But it, you're hanging out with people you love. So it's just like, well, I mean, it's hanging out with Andrews. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you take NyQuil or something? No. Um, <laughs> little sleepy. <laughs> no, the, uh, like for me, just the, the image, I guess, is like the little boy coming over with uh, two loaves and fish, whatever it is. Yeah. And like my meager offering is somehow blessed beyond compared that feeds people. You know, because I'm always, I'm always, I'm always surprised. And if you ever meet me, I always say the same thing. Like that actually was helpful for you, huh? Like you were like, (laughs) oh, wow. (laughs) You're Um, not a complete idiot. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, but yeah, I'm just consistently (laughs) moved how people are moved that this is something that is fruitful for them. And like just the Lord, sorry, I touched you. That (laughs) That, that was weird. (laughs) Yeah, that was, that that was weird. Stay on your side, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Line of demarcation. Um, but yeah, but I'm just consistently moved where like the Lord knows my heart. And sometimes like just once again, people are like, hey, this was beautiful. And just thank you for the podcast. And like I all all it is to me is I show up between certain hours and I talk to brothers. 
You know, like I kind of forget that this reaches a lot of people. Um, <laughs> it's just true. <laughs> not to say that I don't care about the people that it reaches. Yeah, yeah definitely not saying that. <laughs> no, not at all. But um, but anyway, it's just a beautiful thing where I'm humbly just like, wow, that's awesome. Praise God for it in the sense of, once again, he takes the meager offerings that we bring here um, and he blesses it in a beautiful way. And so, yeah. That's beautiful, bro. Thank you for that. You're welcome. It's good to be with you too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think the very, one of the very first episodes we were on, um, we were battling just the notion of more noise for the world and just like, Hey, we're going to do a podcast to see if ours going to kind of get into this game. And there was just like this risk and this caution of just like, Oh gosh, do people just need more things to listen to? And I, and I think that's still, still a real thing for today. Um, with a lot of noise out there and a lot of stuff, but then again, you kind of just hear the feedback and you hear the, the proposal that we make the proposal of the gospel through the Franciscan life, um, the simplicity of it, the attraction to it, the, the way people are drawn in to meet Jesus and to strive to grow um, is just really real. It seems like a proposal that the Lord's usually really using um, to draw people to him in the world right now. So it's like a, a really um, fertile proposal that that's just changing a lot of lives and, and moving a lot of people. So that is really humbling. And uh, I always say like the amount we, we don't spend, we spend like once a month on this. Like, so the, the amount of time we spend on it and the fruit is incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I wish the Lord blessed my other work that it is. Like <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Like that, the stuff I actually spend a lot of time and he does, I'm kidding. But just the reality of just like, this is, this is actually very, a, a small part of our life. Yeah, I forget we do it. I like Honestly, people are like, oh yeah. yeah, like I'm like, oh yeah, that's funny. Like I forget yeah. we do the podcast, praise God. But yeah. the, the the reality of the the people that it reaches and the people that are moved by it and the people that actually feel like they have oxygen in their spiritual life and life 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 within them when it comes to growing with the Lord, you're just like, whoa, gosh, like young people, old people, people who are suffering, people who are striving to grow, people who are discerning their vocations, people just like, whoa, they're mm -hmm. like really using this and look forward to the episode each week to have it feed them and legitimately lead them to the Lord. And legitimately lead them in conversion and healing and what God is doing. You're like, whoa. You know, so it's just really powerful. So I'm just really continuing cool. to be grateful for that. And I like being with you guys too. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Follow Mark Mary. Yeah, you get I only I know? ask only because like I feel like particularly just with our schedules and stuff, like there's like a real push to keep putting it out every week. It's like, you know, especially to get everyone together. And so I feel kind of like <laughs> I feel each time kind of like you, like I, like you guys are doing me a favor and I'm like, like, uh, I don't have anything to offer. It's just like, Hey, can we can, get us tacos? Can you, yeah, can you get us tacos? Can you drive back <laughs> Rob from <laughs> Newark and record for four hours and then go back when you haven't slept that well? Um, and that you guys keep saying yes to that. So I appreciate it. Um, you can no, 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 wait, wait. like, just for the record, like there's very few people in my life. A lot of them are sitting around this table that would ask me to do something. I'd be like, all right, bro, I'm all in. I don't really think too much about it. You're one of those guys. Because like if we, we get invited to a lot of events mm -hmm. together, hey, no, I don't you there's no we there's no way you can get any of us to go and do something all together. Like the us all being in the same room together. Try that. <laughs> it's really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that about? Um what event? events coming up in the future. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just because uh, we just have a lot going on. So <laughs> like the, the the actual that we all come together for that we can all four get in the room in the same time place here. It's, it's like a big thing. It's like not easy to do. Um, Is the stipend come? What kind of form does the stipend come in? <laughs> yeah. It comes in the eternal type. Oh, one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of those. Things. Rob, can we talk about Taco Bell? <laughs> <laughs> Little gift cards. Um, Wait, but why do you do it? Why do I do it? Why do I, it's like my favorite thing that we do. I think it's very, I mean, I certainly the feedback from the people of God is like number one. It's just uh, that disproportionate mm -hmm. fruitfulness you talked about. It's like, this is crazy. This mm -hmm. is really helpful to people. So that's the number one. But it's also, I consider myself like a listener too. Mm -hmm. I, Cause I do go back and listen to him um, for the most part. <laughs> and you're consistently They're, struck by what I say. And I'm often smooth. <laughs> it's just like, that then conversion then series was big for us. That conversion series, we, you know, we were like, oh, the one wow, I was on? like, I'm, I, when we were talking, I'm like, I was moved. Yeah, totally. It's going deeper. But we get feedback. You know, that thing Father PT said was really helpful. And I'm like, I know him. He's, he's, it was not impressive at all. The <laughs> fact that this helped you is a clear sign of God's anointing. So it's like, it's kind of like, that's how it works. I know him. He's generally <laughs> unimpressive. But he, in this particular, <laughs> <laughs> objectively, he was unimpressive, unarticulate. <laughs> 
and that helped you and you like him and wow so, and this is just totally like, oh god i feel like i feel the gap with with the glory and like praise you lord because feel the glass with the glory miracles, miracles could happen praise uh, you god praise you jesus true. thank you lord thank like, you but probably my my best year of religious life probably was first year of seminary and we were like three of us at this table doing like a weekly get together and chat mm. and it was extremely helpful and i feel like this creates a space yeah, totally. for us to do it mm -hmm. This so, is like, yeah, it's not just performative. This is actually something like real that I'm entering into and experiencing with our audience, with you guys, which is good for me. Yeah, thank thanks you. for being vulnerable. I thought it felt like thank we, you, bro. we were really there. We like you too. <laughs> no. no, but it, it's funny because like oftentimes like in homilies after and moments after I'm quoting things that are here. Yeah. And I just presented like it's my own thought. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but no, it's it's definitely fruitful for me in my own spiritual life. And and selfishly, I like, I like this in yeah. the sense of, being with you guys, but also just more so, like I'm, I'm getting something from it. I have to remind you that, that you like hanging out with us, but it's cool. Yeah. For a year, Father PT and I lived on the block, not in the Bronx, not in the same house though. And mm -hmm. like I, we never saw each other. Right. Right. Not, I mean, not just, never, but like it was very rare. Yeah. <laughs> and so having a, it's good because now that we don't live, I don't share an office with you. It's good mm -hmm. to have a space that you have to, that you get to come hang out, have to come hang out. <laughs> forced fun we anyway i just totally. it was on my mind especially as we were like really i'm at like asking for big pushes here so thanks for that yeah, cool bro awesome um so here's what we're talking about is there if you notice like there's almost it's what we're going for and then there's like some versions of it is you might be in like a culture or, or church space where there's like a ton of hospitality and there's a ton of warmth and everyone's kind of happy and joyful and bubbly and, but also kind of like laissez faire and kind of carefree. And you might go there and you like feel really, everyone's coming up to you. How are you doing? Welcome, blah, 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 this and that. We're so good to see you. But then there's also that can be part of that kind of culture is like, there's like no morality, <laughs> you know, like there's no reverence. There's no, uh, ev everything becomes sort of casual. So there's like hospitality and, and a certain degree of warmth. But there's not a lot of, if you will, like concern. There's like, yeah, there's not a lot of, if you will, again, like like reverence or or grab like a holy gravity or gravitas because it's Latin just means gravity. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. <laughs> um, but then also you might get into a space where it's very like truth and stern and worship and serious and there's a lot of reverence and there's a lot of like discipline and there's a lot of intellectual life but there's not a lot of warmth right and that can be culturally and that can also be spiritually like we can't you, one might have a spiritual life which is super kind of like casual go with the flow and and maybe i go to mass maybe i don't but i talk to the lord when i want to or there can be <laughs> a personal spiritual life which is like very much i like i say prayers and it's kind of stern and but there's not a lot of like experiencing like the warmth of the love of god um, and I think what we're going for is, is like a place of both where there is like a real experience of like warmth and love, but also there's like discipline. And I think like, maybe we can propose like the Holy family. I think if you went to Nazareth and you were there with like Joseph and Mary and Jesus, I think that would be like the place where there is like, there is this like motherly warmth, but there's also this sort of the strength of St. Joseph and it's all like really well brought together. And as church, we want to bring them together. So I think I just kind of want to propose that idea and maybe actually like the first place to look at it is just like, especially like we're teaching guys how to pray, things like that. And they're in the spiritual life, in our own like relationship with the Lord, how do we navigate? Like what's the balance between, if you will, like God, God and his, his glory and his, like who he is and his worthiness of our worship, but also like the babe of Bethlehem who came close and like wants us to rest on his heart. Like, how do we mm. integrate these both well? Do you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, you just <laughs> just give him the just give him lip point. I'll give you some more <laughs> some more space to figure out what you're gonna say, PT. <laughs> um, okay, so I think it's just it it, it kind of makes me like uncomfortable in a good way, because I think this is the tension. I think we feel that in our, in the church nowadays, it, it, it's real. And I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't think we want to like put everybody in a box and be like, okay, you act this way and then act this way. Cause I do think it's both. And I think we have to just struggle with the tension. So I think it's good. Um, what, if I could maybe just give some perspective of like kind of a diagnosis, I think sometimes, and you, this is, has something to do with Nazareth as well. 
I think sometimes we we can go live at the extremes because of like maybe some sort of insecurity or lack of safety, right? So like I want to find my identity in the extremes, right? I don't want any like on one side I want there to be like warmth and and everybody can be themselves and there's like you're you're trying to find some sort of identity just with with the kind of that way of thing where there's not a lot of restrictions and there's again it's it's more all about you right then on the other side you can go towards the the you want to find security and the reverence and the kind of the otherworldly and the the seriousness and the gravity of god and the word like a the mystery of god and so you want to you're going to hide in that right and and again i don't want to i don't want to judge people but other people can find themselves in on these on, on the on the extremes but but we're still living out of a place of trying to find our identity in these things, right? And and instead of the Lord and expect it instead of a personal relationship and and engaging our humanity and our hearts and our human experience, but also who God is, mm-hmm. right? We we want to live in this place where it's the divinity and humanity, right? The incarnation, right? Where we want to live in this place. Um, and I think what the Holy Family shows us in Nazareth is that we want to live in a place of security and safety. I know who I am. And I, and I know who God is, or I've been on this journey to know who God is, and I'm willing to live in this place in this mystery, but not be afraid of God and not be afraid of myself, right? I'm not going to hide behind anything or anybody or any, or any kind of, um, kind of outside kind of rubrics or like mm-hmm. be like this or be like this, right? So I think it's interesting. I think we want to find a place of security, um, that's in the Lord and the gift of our, the gift of our humanity. And not necessarily find it somewhere else in in these extremes. I th- I don't know if like answer the question, but I think I think security is a thing. Mm. We want to find security in the Lord, mm. and and not be afraid of that, and and not be afraid of our humanity. Um, but I I think we can run to the extremes or these things to hide. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, just to say I don't know because I was trying to think of examples <coughs> in the life of Jesus in the Gospels that we know. So like, for instance, right, he, with the Samaritan woman, super merciful, like the mess of her life, uh, the woman caught in adultery, super merciful, like in the mess of her life. But at the same time, he was kind of stern with his disciples, Peter, you know, he, hey, uh, I'm going to go and suffer and die. And so it's like, no, you're not I'm like, get behind me, Satan. You're not thinking as, <clears throat> as God does, or with the, the rich young man, like I followed everything you've done well, but just go and sell these, this one thing, like you still have a little bit more. And so I don't think it's difficult to pin down Jesus or at least maybe even our relationship with him to say like, he's always one thing or the other, but like, yeah, there's, there's opportunity to move between both. And I think that's what we're getting at. It's not either, or it's both. And, um, to take seriously, if it's a liturgy or, or, or just like to have a, a healthy reverence of who God is like, this, this is God. He's totally other, right? Like even like the words that we say, they fail to like actually <laughs> get at the reality of who he is but at the same time he he was born <laughs> like mm-hmm. he's a person he came down and, and lived amongst us he had a personality right right you know, like and so there's a certain if you will an accessibility of god you, you got a creaky <laughs> creaky jones <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> um and so there's a certain ex- an, an accessibility of god but at the same time he's very accessible and it's like it's dancing between the two like okay like just show me your heart in this moment or all right lord and, and even i think something that's helpful too and we'll get to practicals but like just having people you trust who are honest with you to say like, Hey, here's the situation. Like last week, whatever happened, um, this girl came up to me at church and I was kind of dismissive of her, or this is what I said to her. Like, how would you take that? If you know, or just like having somebody to help you, if you're unable to see it for yourself, it's <coughs> like, Oh yeah, that's probably this way. And okay. Repent of that. And okay, Lord, like how would you move in this situation? Or, or like, how do you want me, especially as your daughter or as your son to kind of just operate in this way? Um, but just knowing in the breath, that Jesus is, is always there. Uh, sorry. No, I wasn't actually, sorry. I was not, I was just doing <laughs> one of your things and just <laughs> well, being right. weird on the microphone. Okay. Um, sorry. Just, uh, and I, th- I imagine we can get to this, but the confessions are awful. Uh, the confessionals are often a place where this can be played out as well, where you have, maybe you have the priest who is just like giving absolution and just kind of moving through pretty quickly. And, we understand there's reasons for that. And we have, you know, then you have the priest who's in this space of just like welcoming and being hospitable and showing the mercy of God. And and so again, but you want to, the, the, the pastor's heart, the priestly heart is both, 
the, you know, you, you have the, the morality of the church and the strong teaching that you might need to give and the, the reverence that we have for God and the sacrament, but also this like, oh, the human heart in front of me and how Jesus welcomes sinners and has mercy on them. So that, that's a, a that's a dynamic. Uh, I think that's played out in the confessional as well. Um, we all have a, different experiences of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just, um, a word to throw out there as well, and this could this could lead into more of the the kind of conversation we want to avoid. But the challenge is, is that what's the notion of having an agenda in the church? I have an agenda in my spirituality. We have an agenda at our parish. We have an agenda in our community. Agenda. What drives agendas is making things that shouldn't really matter the most matter the most, instead of what Father Innocent is talking about, like the centrality of our relationship with the Lord and who He tells me I am and who He is to me. And in the reality of like, okay, this is the foundation of, of things. And then everything else is kind of put in perspective from there. When different sides in the church and different uh, movements of the church and different things like have ideology, ideologies have agendas, then it becomes these things that other things oftentimes become more important than that. Mm -hmm. Right. And then therefore, then you start. And then it's easily then where the certain ideology, ideologies then can start making judgments of other people who don't agree with them and other people who do do things differently from them. But it's all based on these things that are, should be just in perspective based on what's true mm -hmm. and what's real, which is, uh, an agenda, uh, a, a relationship driven agenda rather than what, what these other things that kind of are on the accessory. So things on the accessory become the most important. And all of a sudden we have these ideologies that then we, we have camps and then we start judging one another and then we start having different things and, um, and they just gets complicated. And then we start to create Jesus and the church in our own image and likeness. So this is how Jesus is. And you're like, well, actually Jesus is all of this, you know, and, and they just, it kind of gets complicated. So that's, that's kind of, yeah, a larger perspective, but it's just good to call it out. That's kind of what's happening here mm -hmm. in, in, in a real way where people start to have make ideologies, what's most important rather than this space of just being in relationship with the Lord. Father PT, we were at a local servants <coughs> meeting a couple weeks ago and, and Father Boniface talked about this and it's super simple and we're talking about it on a human level, but I really appreciate it. And it's something I think we, we highly value as, as Franciscans, but just personally sitting around this table that when you were leaders or your mothers or fathers or, or leaders in the church or um, pastors or whatever, I think the interesting thing when we, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we can hold to principles or mm -hmm. like Father Angels used the word ideologies, agendas, or just like, hey, things are this way. And we need a, you know, the liturgy again with all the reverence in the world. But sometimes we can hold to these things and these things can be can be more important than the people. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so Father Boniface was saying, you know, we have to, the value is communion and connection. Right. <laughs> like the whole point of, of the Christian life is communion with God. Right. And everything is at the service of communion and or connection. Right. So when I'm a leader of the, like, as we're leading the friary, like sometimes, especially in formation, like I want to teach the brothers, okay, like this is really important. This principle of our life or this, this expression of our life is really important, but I got to make sure that, that what is what it's at the service of their communion with the Lord or their communion with the brothers. These things aren't to hijack us or to distract us. Right. And this is where sometimes we can feel that <clears throat> like rules become more important than people mm -hmm. or principles become more important than people. And then the commune and the connection are kind of second rate. Right. So I just think it's, it's, it's another way of saying what Father Angus was saying <clears throat> is that everything in our lives um, has to be at the service of communion with God in our humanity Right. And, and I think this is where I, th this is why it's really important to us that we don't, um, you know, yes, you can pray and yes, you can, and have just wonderful, beautiful liturgy, or yes, you can have reverence for the church and morality, but if you lose your humanity, you lose your connection and communion with the Lord and with one another, like what's like, there's something happening there. There's something off. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I just think it's, it's another way to say like, is the, is this bearing fruit in communion? Mm -hmm. Is it bearing fruit in real connection and real something being life giving, um, or is it distracting or or um, or is it just is just just isolating or pulling us apart from communion? And why I want to keep going back to um, founding this primarily <coughs> in our personal like re personal we'll, we'll just use personal relationships with the Lord is because I think that's ultimately what we're talking about is like a way of behavior and responding to the nature and the persons persons of God, right? Like, 
and that he he does i think reveal this and guide us and that's why we need the holy spirit as well because <laughs> certainly he is he is um like what it means for god to be god and like is is beyond our comprehension like how actually glorious and great and how unworthy we are of being his children and saying his name and his love like it is like mind-blowingly more than mind-blowingly beyond our comprehension is something that like we just absolutely don't deserve at all but again at the same time he does invite us to like through the grace of the holy spirit to cry out to him as abba father right and he does come so close to us and again i think beautifully in um in the incarnation and in his nativity he like actually rests like in in a human being's arms and he becomes in some ways like dependent on them Mm. and he again desires and he receives saint john being so familiar and close to him that he he like rests on his heart like that's like a really profound like intimacy and he gives himself to us in the most holy eucharist like like he like that we actually receive him into our very being like so there is like he it ultimately we have to go back to (coughs) actually knowing who god is and, and really being rooted there. And then instead of like putting on some sort of like we're playing a game, like we're playing, we're playing uh, whatever, like hospitality, generous person, or we're playing like really serious person. And if it's like, if we're, <laughs> if we're not, if it's not actually rooted in an authentic and true like um, experience, experience of probably. God, it's kind of, it's just going to be off. Right. Um, one, one thing about it though, like for, for <coughs> men joining our community, we're not having a lot of guys who are like excessively carefree and chill. Ten, like the, I would say the tendency would be more towards like a strictness. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of like when, when men are like really, really intense, they have like super, super simple room. They have nothing in there. They, they live poverty at a really, really high level. What you have to give time to see is like, is this like an authentic <coughs> gift and charism and work of the Holy Spirit? Or is this actually the fruit of some sort of like, affective immaturity Mm -hmm. which which kind of has a coldness and a detachedness and that's actually like what's at the root here right and so Mm -hmm. there there can be like an intensity and a high performance but also there can be like a severity and a harshness towards others and it's not necessarily like the spirit of the lord i remember one um one of my classmates sort of being encouraged and corrected because he like had a super super simple room and one of the older friars was like (coughs) you should have like a picture of your family in there and part of it was just adding like a warmth and a love to this environment so that kind of like just to flesh it out. So, um, yeah, again, I think what we want to be rooted in, or we want, we want both. We understand there is like a little dance of how these work. It has to come authentically from the Lord, but just you, you were talking about how you can hide, you can hide in rules and strictness and devotion and whatever, or you can hide, from any sort of consequences by making nothing really matter. And so there is a warrant, but there's also no consequences for action. And, and we want, we want to be in a place where there's, there's love and devotion and warmth and also like worship and adoration. And, and I share this, I think, because myself, my tendency still is one towards like severity, one towards a little bit being harder or harsher or like we're in the chapel everybody's shut up and be serious. Right. Um, we're in the, we're in the sacristy. Why are you talking? Um, yeah, we're getting better at that. And that's not about devotion. That's just about it being annoying. Uh, <laughs> not really kind of, but I, so I think like I'm sort of on a, a personal journey with it too, but like to actually valuing warmth and that when people come to you, they feel loved and they feel seen and they feel cared for. That's like really, really important. You know, and so maybe you're really good at saying your prayers, but if people are scared and intimidated by you, like that's not the fullness of what we're going for either. Bro, can we just say like what you're saying when going back to like hiding, like if you're hiding in one of those places, you're also basically hiding from the Lord yeah, and the truth of who God is. And I think that's the main point is just like, we can make it about those places you're hiding in, but what you're doing is you're disconnecting yourself from the truth of God. And so you could, you might have an austere cell and you might want to be intense and you might want to be all about the fasting and all about all these things. But like your experience of God has to be not authentic then if this is, these are these places you're going to hide in. And mm-hmm. that's the danger. Right. And I think just to kind of keep hogging the mic a little bit is like, right. There's a hiding and then like, there's like a control and a black and whiteness and a clarity in there, which someone can find security in. And that's not, not what we're going for. Yeah. yeah. And you, it, I guess the only thing that I would add to that is that, you know, when you see it, 
this is like a really beautiful thing. And I think we feel that, but I don't think. Yeah. And I mean, and I, and I, I, I agree with you, yeah. but I, I guess I just want to say that like this, it's just a very beautiful thing when someone has like done this dance and there's something that the reverence and kind of the, the wonder and all they have is like really from this really beautiful place of, of being like fighting for the Lord and fighting for their humanity, not being afraid. And then you, I just, I just see it in some brothers, like they have this and then you go up to them and they're just like totally, they're like all in for you. There, there's, there's a warmth, there's a connection. And so I think that it's, it's, it's possible. Right. And I think that's what we're trying to practice is that this is how our, this is how the Lord wants to meet our humanity. And this is how we become more like Jesus. You just wonder what Jesus was like, again, the reverence and the <clears throat> awe and, and the, the holiness, but at the same time, his humanity, his personality, his, his deep desire to, to be in the presence of people. Right. Um, I think Jesus just teaches us that. Mm-hmm. And it, this might just be a different way of saying it, but just at the end of the day, who are we serving? Like, are we serving ourselves in these things or mm. to make us feel better that we're more strict with liturgical things or that we're serving people? And does it, is this about how good we feel that we're doing these things or is it really at the service of the Lord? And like for me, it's St. Paul, right? Like <laughs> he says to himself, like I was the most zealous of all Pharisees and all these different things and I kept the letter of the law. But when he was knocked, well, not knocked off his horse, but like when he had the, the vision of Jesus, like, what did Jesus say? Like, so why are you persecuting me in my church? Like, it's it's him he's against, Jesus. And so mm-hmm. there's that personal, oh, okay. And, and that was probably radical for Paul just to realize like, oh my gosh, like it's always been you. Like it's always been you who's been behind these things. And I've been trying to to get to you through these other radical means and even by persecuting Christians, but oh, it, it's you and you've mm. always wanted my heart and how much freedom did he experience after that? And even more so just set the world on fire. Um, once again, by encountering Jesus, by staying with him and being with him. And, and obviously we know his life, it wasn't easy after that, you know, um, there are still people <laughs> who were after him or whatever it is, but he was a free man, you know, he's a free man in that. Mm. So. And I think part of like how we can distinguish, like how, like how do we discern a little bit, like if we're in a good spot or not, um, Probably, like I think the, the like the discernment to be honest is like are we living the uh, the fullness of like Christian life and are we living and loving like Jesus right so um like are we are we are we praying are we celebrating like mass are we are we doing so according to the way in which the church is asking us to do so mm-hmm. right like is the is there like a, a like a reverence and an understanding like okay this is Jesus this is God this is like a serious thing and like really kind of allowing that to be there. But also is there, for example, and is there like fullness of truth, particularly in the area of morality, which is one place it might get compromised. Um, like sexuality, the human person, all that sort of stuff. Are we are we like being faithful to that and, and, and teaching it is true. But on the other side is like, okay, are we, do we care about people? Are there works of charity? Is there tithing? Is there work with the poor? Like, do you, is like, is there like, right, is there this, this heart of Jesus that has compassion and care for, for the sinner and the lost person. And we want to just do a little bit of an inventory like in our life. And this could help us kind of understand of like, if we're in the sweet spot in the heart of Jesus living like that or not, like, okay, do I have, am I like, am I, am I holding the line in my own life? Like with, if you like, particularly like with morality and worship and am I, do I actually care about people? And am I like allowing my worship to also like overflow into love of neighbor, like love of God, love of neighbor. We want them both. Yeah. Awesome. You guys want to say something else? <laughs> just, I mean, just the reality of yeah. it, like, am I, am I worshiping God and, and reverent and moral, like in that, in that reality? And then am I a man and woman of communion? Like, and does my, my experience of communion of God reflect itself in the way I love the people around me, the way I love my family, the way I'm connected to other people? Or is this just a place where I come and do something and then I leave and I'm not really a part of things? And that's not really capturing the heart of Jesus. And that the fruitfulness of that is not necessarily where I'm going to be intentional about reaching out or doing things in the parish or doing things for the poor. And right. So keeping it all together, I mean, just to use that word, like, how do we live that communion? <coughs> right. When people see us, do they see us as, as, um, you know, what they talk about where they're just like bridges of communion. And I'm like, am I emanating that from my life, from my heart, from my mm-hmm. eyes, the way I see people, the way I encounter people, or am I just kind of with pretty zoned out, pretty, pretty isolated. This is what I do. I'm going to come and worship and I'm going to go, you know, and, and there's obviously something off about that. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, just thinking something in a parish life where, yeah, either sometimes like it feels like in a parish, like 
I can't make a difference as a parishioner. Um, like the priest is whatever it is, uh, according to our own preference or, and I just either feel like giving up or whatever it is, but you can make a difference in the sense of, okay, uh, specifically reaching out to people, like being warm, being somebody who is encouraging, being somebody who's praying for sure for what's happening, but even more so once again, <coughs> maybe the Lord's inviting you to, um, yeah, just to go deeper in prayer with him and just to, okay, Lord, like, where are you in all this? Um, can I, can I actually, uh, encounter you in this, in this way? And I think a real thing is, is just taking a step out in faith, you know, like once again, being in, being comfortable in the uncomfortability of what's happening and just in a real way, just asking the Lord, okay, um, speak to my heart in this way, because the gift of warmth sometimes like in a, in a parish is, is huge. Like maybe you don't have that many hospitality people or conversely, like somebody who kind of steps up and say, Hey, look, uh, whatever, not father, but just talk to the sacristan. Hey, the way that we're purifying the vessels, that doesn't seem to be given proper dignity to who Jesus is. You know, like once again, dialoguing with the Lord, knowing who he is and asking him in a real way. Okay. First of all, obviously just for the love of him, not for the love of yourself, but just mm -hmm. to really mm -hmm. honor who the Lord is and especially making sure that things are, are not getting dropped in between, uh, as far as people and also to just reverence. And so, yeah. Sorry, I just think there, no, that's yeah, that's great. Um, I think the gift of our life as Christians, and again, we're we're talking about our relationship with Jesus and the fullness of our life with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be attractive, mm -hmm. kind of on on every aspect, mm -hmm. right? The gift, how we worship, and and the, the gift of morality is just it, it's supposed to just to to be a revelation of the truth of who God is and in the, the the gift of the human person. Like all these things are supposed to be attractive. Right, and, and I'm not I'm not saying that has to look a particular way or a cookie cutter. Everybody's mm -hmm. going to do that differently, but but there, I mean, maybe that's some. It's you look at you look at other uh, like ideologies or other groups that are just mm -hmm. not that attractive. Like yeah. I don't I, like who wants to be a politician these days. Right. It's like that's not attractive. The division, <laughs> like, all, all of that, right? I mean, I call it out politics is is just easy, right? Mm -hmm. it, it makes sense, but 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 I I just. I, yeah, I just long for for the day when, like, the gift of our own Christianity, the gift of our personal relationship with Jesus, the gift of our parishes, the gift of our church, that could just be attractive on on mm -hmm. every front. Right. And like Father Mark Mary said, it's like, yeah, we're pr we're we're praising and worshiping in all the right ways with the reverence and and the worship of God, and then we're warm and the gift of our personalities, where we have the the gift of communion with the poor. Um, with our families, like all the, all the, all the right ways of evangelization, like everything is just attractive. Mm. Um, for some reason that word, it just strikes me because right. I think that's what the gospel is supposed to do. Jesus was the most <clears throat> attractive person mm -hmm. in every part of his divinity and humanity. You're like, whoa, like something's happening there. And I think he just wants us to share in that. Right. Cause the glory of God is man, man fully, fully alive. alive. Yep. Right. Like there's something there. It's not just a nice thing that somebody <laughs> said, but because we can actually be human um, because we know who we are in the eyes of the Father. Um, we're His, and so we can go. For, we, hopefully, we can go back and forth between these two these two realities, but also just to live there and to actually be um, a thriving, flourishing mm -hmm. person. You know, and so isn't there? I don't know who says it. Like God saves from sour faced saints. I mean, Saint Teresa of Avila, I think. Yeah, it's but a I think to Pope, her. Pope Francis quotes. I think Saint Teresa. But I don't know if she actually said that. It seems like the type of thing that maybe someone didn't say, but they say it, they say it, and it just became popular because people like it. But I don't know, right? Because that's a thing that happens to St. Francis, Mother Teresa a lot. Um, and so there's something to that. But I, I do think, I wonder actually with our listeners, I bet we have, we, we probably actually have a pretty good spectrum mm -hmm. of folks. Certainly I do think with most kind of young people who would be very serious about the church and her teachings. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of times the tendency would be towards the harshness, right? Like, so you're, you're, you get there before mass and you're praying and it's like somebody comes in wearing a hat and you just like glare at them, this guy, but you know, like there's like, that would be kind of a little bit probably of the, at least my own tendency or whatever, like that, like this, I'm praying, I'm serious. Look how serious I am. Right. <laughs> and we just want to make sure I do think again, um, there can be, at least in my own experience, a reduction of warmth as like God is God and he's so important. He's so like, he's so worthy of a worship that whether or not people feel loved or cared for doesn't really matter because what's most important is just knowing who God is and that. And I just don't think that's necessarily attractive for a lot of people. 
for some, I think that it can be, but that we do, we do want both like a beautiful, beautiful worship, beautiful liturgy, beautiful hospitality, beautiful works of charity. And like we, uh, uh, we want it all. And that's what we look to Jesus. And, and that's ultimately like we're trying to live like him. Right. So nice one. And I just, yeah, I think there's a, just to give people permission to desire to experience, experience warmth in prayer mm-hmm. as well and with the Lord <coughs> and um, fullness and a fullness and just to make sure that uh, yeah our our spaces are places of orthodoxy but also of authentic love of Jesus mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. well said yeah cool um father Yanni face Yanni <laughs> you want to close us here yeah I do in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit amen Lord we praise you and we thank you and just allow our hearts to yeah, receive all that you want to give us. Thank you for the gift of, yeah, the truth of our of our faith, the gift of worship, the gift of the Holy Mass, the gift of all the ways we can worship and praise you and reverence you, Lord, the gift of the truth and, and our moral teachings. But also thank you, Lord, for the just gift of your heart, your heart that's merciful and good and compassionate and tender. And it's a heart that always welcomes us. Um, Lord, just bring us together in this space where all things come together in you one of our hearts this night, this day, to experience that again. And we just surrender in a deeper way to this truth, Lord, and just ask for the grace to say yes to it again. And we pray this all in your most holy name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, Father, Son, Son, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. I was just laughing. You said this night. This night, this day. It's night. (laughs) What's the name? What's the name of, uh, we mentioned Steve Urkel at the beginning. What's the name of cool Steve Urkel? Stefan? Stefan Urkel. (laughs) Is that what it is? Yeah. There's Steven Urkel? Or, yeah, Steven Urkel and Stefan Urkel. He walked into that. A lot of our listeners probably have no clue about any that of that is, There's some that do. Family you know? matters? I bet a lot of them yeah. know who Steve Urkel is. Mm-hmm. I can't believe you went there. I mean, there's other places. Stefan Urkel. <laughs> I, mean, I bring that up because, um, obviously, Father Innocent, Angelus, triplets, twins, look alike. Father Innocent's supposed to be wearing glasses. Father Angelus is wearing his glasses. I wonder, the cameraman like, this, was confused today. Is this part of like? <laughs> is this part of your thing? You're trying to like make your own. You're way. trying to be like cool, Steve Urkel, and have you want to be Stefan? I don't really to think be, too much about it. I took him off because I don't like wearing him with this. You, you want him to be Clark Kent, your <laughs> Superman? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that ultimately <laughs> thing? I'm just saying that's what he seems to be trying to do here without wearing his glasses, trying to propose some sort of. I can't see that agenda. I like, yeah. It's a thing. Every speaking like, of agendas. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh thanks for watching everybody and thanks for, listening. for all of our benefactors as well we, hope, it means a lot yeah and hopefully being warm and thank you guys for making time to be here texas state dad <laughs> texas state dad thanks for that all right see y'all next peace, week y'all. peace bye poco a poco vamos a llegar somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are we make our way hey hey little by little we learn a little more each day that god is love that life is short, that all will be well, and I know